Hello and welcome to our Oakland County Parks and Recreation's virtual um, take and make kit for eco friends back to school with repurpose. Uh, my name is Amanda and I will be your host this evening as we make some school supplies out of recycling um, materials and we will give them a little extra life. Um, we are going to start out. I just want to show you. Um, we do have our next season flyer out. So this is for the fall. Um, we have virtual programs again. We'll be doing uh, Bug These Plants, which will be making a carnivorous plant terrarium um, in learning about some of the carnivorous plants that live here in Michigan. And we have another eco friends. Um, this one's gonna be don't trash cans using aluminum cans to make some crafts uh, and upcycle them. And we also have a self-led kit. So that one does not have the Zoom instruction, um, but it's just got written instructions for you to make a Yule log. So that's a very popular program. And last year it sold out, I think within the first week or so. All right, we do also have some in-person programs um, at Wind Nature Center we'll be doing. Um, we are continuing our trail hikes by appointment uh, for free tra guided trail hikes. We are going to, at both centers, um, and we have our puddle jumpers and morning munchkins. Um, at both centers as well. But you'll see we have a creepy cryptid hike um, on a Friday evening there coming up at Wind Nature Center. We'll have a bat walk in September for our, um, for our evening walk here at Red Oaks Nature Center. You can find more information about those um, either at the nature centers or on our website and social media. So inside your kit, we should have all of these things listed. Um, and you may notice that you do need a few things that did not come in your kit. You will need glue of some kind. I did recommend um, a hot glue gun if possible. Um, and if you've got a hot glue gun, you also want some extra glue sticks. If you do not have a hot glue gun available to you, or you don't want to use it and trip on the cord, or you don't want to burn yourself, um, take a chance of burning yourself. You can use tacky glue um, in a pinch. You really could use just Elmer's school glue, but it's going to take a lot longer to dry. So you're going to want to do um, one project and then set it aside for a while to dry and set um, before going to the next one. And we'll do that a little bit with the tacky glue as well. You will also need scissors, uh, fairly sharp ones that can cut through our cardboard cereal boxes. And um, one thing that I suggest is different colors of Sharpie markers, um, permanent markers. Sharpie brand is the only brand that I found that actually works on writing on plastic. And a couple of the things that we're going to be making today are plastic. Um, I wasn't willing to go up in the garage and get the colored markers. So <laughs> I'm just going to use the black one for decorating today. But the good thing is, if you don't have colored markers, or you're like me and a little too lazy to go get them, um, once you make your projects, you can definitely wait and decorate them afterward. There's no expiration date on when you can decorate something. We're going to start with some of the things in our kit. So one of the things in your kit is this bunch of papers. It's got these binder clips on them. Uh, binder clips are definitely going to be your friend today if you're using the tacky glue and or the Elmer school glue um, because they can help hold things in place and you can set them somewhere else to dry. If you have a few extra binder clips that will be able, that will make you be able to um, do your projects a little bit quicker. Uh, you can have one waiting to dry while you make the next thing and get it set. Um, but if not, it's you're just going to need a little extra time. So these are repurposed papers. These actually came out of the basement at our nature center. 
um, at Independence Oaks at the Wind Nature Center. And these were out of our craft bin. So the back sides of the papers, you, uh, you might find, you'll probably find a bunch of spider webs and some other things. And these will, um, you can definitely color on the backs of your pages or whatever. Um, they should all be facing the same direction so that you have clean tape. The clean side is always up. So the first thing that we're going to be doing today is you're going to decide if you want, when you're making your, your journal or your notebook, um, you're going to decide if, what size you want it. So if you want it to be notebook sized, then you will want to make this be your spine the long way, right? So then you would put your binder clip on the ends of your paper and you would apply glue down the edge here. This is something that you can do with smaller sheets of paper too. You can cut this in half and then you would have more of like a diary um, size or you could cut it into quarters. So half and then half again. And you can end up, um, you could just keep it like this and have a little notepad that you can have on your desk and ready for um, taking phone numbers down or um, writing your, your current password information to keep track of it. And then you just apply glue along the edge, make sure that it gets all the way in there. Um, sometimes you can use that Sharpie again to just kind of spread it. Use a pencil, you can use your finger if you want. And you just wanna make sure that it's pressed in So it gets in between all the pages. And then you set that in the corner to dry. Do that here as well. If you're on the ends, if your papers are not close together, you can just move your binder clip down just a little bit. And again, I'm just gonna roll. I'm gonna set those aside. Move on to the next thing. This is probably um, plastic jug. We've got a couple of rubber bands and a button on a string. So what we're going to do with this, um, and again, all of these Eco Friends projects are meant to be made out of things so that you can easily find around your house. Um, so if you want to make more of them, you have the ability now, right? So if you want to uh, make another, you can just find another gallon size jug. Uh, ours are actually made out of distilled water jugs, but you can use uh, milk jugs if you want it as well. Uh, just make sure that you wash them really well. The water ones have less of a chance of being uh, icky. So um, if you would like to make one of these, you might consider um, using the ones that's in your kit as a template. So what you would do is get another one that hasn't been cut out yet and just kind of trace the one that came in your kit along the outside of your jug and, um, and cut version out. 
an interesting thing um, if you in the cutout portion, which we don't have, but it would have the handle on it. So you can also cut that into a shape to use it as a dustpan. So using every piece uh, tidbit there. So here, what we're going to do is make just a little sandwich keeper. It'll keep your peanut butter and jelly. It's not airtight, it won't keep it fresh, but it'll keep it from being crushed inside in the bottom of your bag because I am really bad at that and I hate it when all my jelly leaks out. Um, so what we're going to do, sometimes it might be a little sticky. Um, if you just put a little hand sanitizer there and you can wipe that off the stickiness. So what we're going to do here is put our yarn through the hole at the bottom, both ends. Put that through so that our button is close to the end. The hard part to actually show you what I'm doing. Um, and then we're going to try to tie I say try. It, this is not necessary. It's a little bit easier if you can do it um, to keep it in there. If you can't get it, it's not that big of a deal. So we're just going to try to tie a little knot at the end. I'm going to move our knot all the way to the bottom and pull on it so it's as close to the edge as we can get it. Then scissors and cut. It's not that kind of blob to keep it in there. And then we'll put a little bit of glue on that. This one in particular um, is helpful. If you use the glue gun, it just makes it quicker, easier. And again, we can just kind of press glue against. against the iron, so then it holds it in there. And then we can take a rubber band and we just put two in the kit just in case something happened and um, one of your rubber bands broke, but you just need one rubber band for this. So we're gonna put that rubber band through the top hole and then um, just put this top piece of the rubber band through the bottom. And then, they have one that's already dried here. Then what you can do is fold down the flaps on the sides. Once you put your sandwich in there or whatever you want to keep safe, and then you can um, pull your, your top down and use the rubber band. And it just adds a little bit of stability. Um, you can also you may have, if you watched our That's a Wrap program last December, we did a project just like this um, and used it as a gift box. So that's something else that you can use. This um, is plastic. And so you can, again, <laughs> you can um, decorate it with your Sharpie markers. I'm not sure why other brands of permanent markers just don't seem to do as well. They seem to just like smear around, but the Sharpies really, really have it going on when it comes to decorating these. So our next project is going to be another plastic one. Um, so inside, you may have noticed these two water bottles and a zipper. So what we're going to be making here is going to be a pencil case. So uh, we're going to start by 
um, but getting our water bottles. And if we have labels on there, we can peel that off. And again, if there's stickiness left from the label, uh, we're just gonna get a little bit of rubbing alcohol or hand sanitizer and just wipe that down. Too crazy with it right now. And again, just like decorating it, um, you can add the and wipe off the, the stickies um, after you've got it put together. We just want to make sure that around the edge it's pretty clear. So for the pencil holder, what I will say that I have learned in making a few of these is that if I know what I want to put in it, uh, put a pencil in it, then I want to make sure that it's big enough to put a pencil in. <laughs> it seems kind of silly, but there it is. Um, and it does work better if you have, um, if you're looking for a pencil one, you're going to want taller bottles, or at least one taller bottle. And one of them pretty short. You don't want two that are the same size and then put something that's this entire length inside because then um, if, if it takes up the, both bottles and you go to open it, it's not gonna come out, right? Because it's gonna be taking up the entire space. So if there's something long that you wanna use, um, then just remember you need a pretty long bottle on the bottom. Um, and then the shorter bottle on the top. So I'm gonna try make it just pencil size. Uh, I'm just gonna cut this again. So it's a little bit. Now I have also seen some people decide to make little um, apples, little apple containers, and they can put like, Candy or goldfish crackers or something inside. And you would use two of the short, you would just cut your water bottle short. Um, and it would end up being about this tall altogether. Um, but it's the same general project. Right, so we take our two water bottles and this one, uh, this one, going to use some of my binder clips from earlier. Because I, I do not want to plug in the gun right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our glue and we're going to just draw a line, a thin line, all the way down as close to the edge of the zipper fabric as we can get it. We don't want any glue on the zipper portion. All right. And then what we're going to do is take one of our water bottles and we're going to roll that all the way through. Now we want to let this dry before we, uh, we go any further. So we're just going to set that with our binder clips, particularly if you just take a binder clip to the end here, you should hold it in place pretty well. So now that it's dry, what we're going to do is unzip the zipper portion. And again, we are just going to lay strip of glue as close to the edge as we can of the fabric portion. 
all the way down. Not on our fingers. And then we're going to roll this plastic along that edge. That. Cut it and let it dry like that for a little while. Again, this would be um, a fine time. To decorate it however you'd like. And get bonus points with me. Put a turtle on it. But it's totally up to you to make it your own. And then the good thing again about the sharpie markers is that if your design you want to draw on the fabric, you can put your initials there so everyone knows who it belongs to. Um, but if it's part of your design to the Sharpie will work on both. And then you can switch your pencils or your markers. Yeah, if you little. Uh, but this is our cereal box holder. Our largest cereal box because there were two cereal boxes in your kit. And it's a pretty folded flat, right? And then we're going to use our smallest box. So uh, most of these were either granola bars or um, the Nature Valley biscuits. Right, so the first thing we're going to do, this one includes a lot of scissors. So the first thing we're going to do is cut one of the long sides. As straight as we can. We're just gonna cut right on the crease, keeps it nice and straight. And then we can trim off all of the folds. We might wanna use those later when we're making our notebooks. So we're just going to keep them to the side for now. If you have a guillotine style paper cutter, that works really well for making sure this is a nice straight cut, clean cut. Or if you're lucky enough to have one of those sliding style uh, scrapbook paper cutters, that works really well too. We're going to do that on the top and the bottom right on the fold, as close as we can get it. That already looks like a folder. And if you have a sheet of paper, this is a pretty good folder. If you want to make sure that it can still fit inside other things, um, you could trim the edge if you want. I'm happy with it this size. I'm not going to try to put it into a filing cabinet or anything, or into a backpack. So um, the next thing we're going to do is open that up. So if you want people to know what kind of cereal is your favorite, um, then, you know, I think it looks kind of cool. There's also a lot, there's some pretty cool pictures on, um, on cereal boxes sometimes. This one's really festive, kind of holiday-ish. 
and man, it's always going to make me hungry with these muddy buddies. It's one of my favorites. And um, but if you don't want to do that, you can flip this inside out and make it a brown cover and just use um, use markers or crayons or anything you want to to draw on there as well. But I'm going to keep it as the cereal box. Quick trim here. And a flat of And I'm going to take this. It. Cut it right here. on this path. I'm going to put that as close to the bottom of the folder as I can get it. Just press on it. And I'm just going to fold this as straight as I can on the edge. Hold this here too. Make sure my paper fits in between the two. Put a little bit of glue here, just on the edge. And a little bit of glue along here on the edge. Flip it up. If you're using tacky glue or Elmer's glue, again, your binder clips can just go along the edges here or here to help hold that in place. Now, if you don't want your folder to go that way, you could have um, cut this long ways. Um, you could. You could make your pocket be a different shape. You can make it be like a triangular pocket. So uh, you can just kind of cut one here. And then just do one side. Right. We just kind of take this shape and go along. Here. We'll make that the bottom. Okay. 
on the side here. I'm gonna fold that in. We have a little pocket there. Depends on what you want to put in your pockets. A big sheet of paper you want to put in your pocket. So we've uh, we've glued our two pockets in. You could keep uh, your folder your papers on one side. Um, maybe you want to keep your mask in the other, or something else small. Um, maybe you have smaller papers, but. So here's another way that we can um, we can cut our smaller box to make a pocket. Slide our papers in. The last uh, project that we're going to be making today is going to be that that notepad. So what we're going to do. Um, is we're going to take that stack of paper that we glued, okay, and we've got another cereal box still. Mine is a blueberry muffin one. And I'm just going to take four of these little tabs from my previous cereal box. We're going to cut again. Remember, mine, um, I am going to keep as a long ways notebook size one. If you wanted to make it shorter, you would just cut it down more, right? So what we're going to do is cut it. So we're going to cut these little flaps on the bottom as straight as we can. I'm going to cut the ones on the top. And we're going to cut along the side, just like we were making the folder. Scraps. And papers. So another thing that you could have done when you did set this aside to glue that I neglected to mention um, is if you happen to have a piece of scrap ribbon, you can use that to help stabilize the, um, the paper binding as well. But that's completely unnecessary. Then what we do is we're going to close our book inside and close our paper inside and see how there's just a little bit of an edge there. I'm going to keep that and make sure that we can actually close it shut. So we're going to keep it just, just a little bit away. It's still a little, not completely dry yet. It's close enough. And then I'm going to take this. And again, if you don't want the egos to be on the front, you can just flip it inside out, fold this line the other way, and use the brown side to draw on. We're going to put a little bit of glue in there, put it in the front part of our book. on this one. I'm going to put that there. Hold it. Then I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on the back. Oh, 
think it was pretty on this one. And do the same thing on the back here. If you wanted to, you could take these full pieces here even and um, just for a little extra support. Some glue on there. And just hold line. Then this might even be a little fun just to remind you what's on the other side. It's going to put a little bit extra go waffle on there. Right. So that is everything that um, all of the projects that we planned for in your kit, but that we haven't used yet that was in your kit, and that's our brown paper bag. And I do like to use whatever that I give you in the kit. It adds to it a little bit. So what we're going to do, so what we're going to do is start by taking the paper bag apart. And if you wanted to do this, you would need this um, a print book, something that is not an ebook. <laughs> and so what you can do for this. So now that we have our paper bag all constructed, so it's just a big piece of brown paper. Now what we do is we take our book. And kind of mark. book is and fold the paper in the width of the book. Now we're going to kind of center our book in here. Hold. Here. And do the same on the other side. And then on each side, we're just going to tuck, slide the book over into the little flap. Until it gets to the fold.
and there you go. So then you can kind of cover your book. It helps protect it and it gives you a nice place to doodle on and that way you can read whatever kind of book you want without necessarily advertising to the world what book you're reading. Well, thank you for joining me tonight for our Ego Friends uh, Back to School Free Purpose virtual Zoom instruction. And I would love to see what you've made. Uh, if you want to, you can feel free to take a picture and share it with our Facebook page um, and other social media pages. And we would love to get a chance to see what you, you've built today. Uh, I'm sure it's great. Uh, thank you again for coming and have a great day.